The focus of this video is section 2.2, making inferences using the likelihood function. But before I dive into the likelihood function, I'd just like to review the probability distribution that we saw in the last video. And so the idea was that we set pi is equal to 0 0.5, and we varied y from 0 to 30. That was what was on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, we had our probability distribution. So if we think about our probability distribution, there's a couple of interesting, useful things that we could do with that. And the first is null hypothesis statistical testing. And we did that. And we said, OK, n is equal to 30. Y was equal to 22. Our null hypothesis, pi is equal to 0 0.5. And so we asked ourselves, OK, what's the probability of y being greater or equal to 22 if the null hypothesis was correct? And the probability we got, our p-value was 0 0.00261. And so therefore, we rejected the null hypothesis that pi was equal to 0 0.5 in favor of the idea that there were more females than males in that department. So that's one thing we've seen that we can do use with probability distributions. A second thing we might have done was made a 95% confidence interval. But we're not going to do that in this section or in this course. So that's what we can do with probability distributions. What are some of the fun things we can do with likelihood functions? And that's what I, I really want to focus on, because this is a section on likelihoods. What sort of neat things can we do with that? Well, one thing we can do is what's known as maximum likelihood estimation. And the second thing we can do is look at relative likelihoods. And we begin with maximum likelihood estimation. So let's say our goal was to estimate pi, the proportion of females in department X. And our estimator of pi, I'm going to refer to that as pi hat. We saw that earlier. This, this is the hat here. So the thing here is the hat. And it's just a way to indicate that what we're dealing with is an estimator. Now, given that what we observed was y is equal to 22 in a case where n is equal to 30, what would our best estimator of pi likely be? Well, common sense says you get 22 over 30, and that would give you 0 0.733. That's a really simple way to come up with pi hat, our estimate of pi. But we can also use the likelihood function to arrive at an estimate of the most likely value of pi. So here's our likelihood function. And remember how that operated. We kept y constant at 22. We knew that n was equal to 30. And then we varied pi, if it goes on, the x-axis is pi, everything between 0 and 1. And then with these values of 22, 30, and pi, we calculated probability of y, and that's what went on the y-axis. So our goal is, what is the best estimate of pi? Well, if you look at this plot, there's a likelihood function there. If we look at this plot, there's the maximum possible likelihood that we got. And if we take this line down, we can see the pi value that gives us the maximum likelihood is equal to 0 0.733, which is exactly what we got when we used our common sense approach of 22 over 30. Now, in this particular case, when you go out and get 22 females in a sample size of 30, you know, 
just off the top of your head, you're going to come up with 22 over 30 as being the best estimate. But what you're going to see when you go into 582 and especially 586 is that, you know, when you do your thesis, you're going to be estimating parameters and there's different ways to do it. And what you're going to discover in 582 and especially 586 is this idea of creating a likelihood function and then determining the value of the parameter that maximizes the likelihood function. And that's what we mean by maximum likelihood estimation as a way of estimating par different parameters. That's the trick that you're going to use in those other courses. So that's one interesting thing we can do is this whole idea of MLE. The second interesting thing we can do is this notion of relative likelihoods. Now, when we used our probability distribution earlier, when we used our probability distribution earlier, we actually were able to do null hypothesis statistical testing. We're not going to do that here, but we can gain some information about males and females in a department by thinking about it this way. Okay, if there were an equal number of males and females in department X, the likelihood associated with that, and again, what we're doing is we're holding Y constant at 22 females, the likelihood of you know, that being occur is 0 0.0545, assuming that pi is equal to 0 0.5. On the other hand, if we calculated our estimate of pi hat, our estimate of the population proportion is being 0 0.733, we get a much higher likelihood. So the likelihood associated with that which we observed, so we observed y is equal to 22, the likelihood associated with that with is 0 0.1630. In contrast, the likelihood associated with having an equal number of males and females in the population is 0 0.00545, and the ratio of 0.163 over 0 0.005 is approximately 30. Now, this is not no hypothesis statistical testing, but if you consider the fact that the likelihood associated with that which we observed, 22, is 30 times greater than the likelihood associated with equal numbers of males and females, to me that provides some pretty strong evidence that there actually are more females than males in the population, even though we're not going to do formal null hypothesis statistical testing.